in uh, 2007, if I'm remembering correctly here, we were having major wildfires in Florida. That's the story you're talking about? Yeah. Major wildfires. 222 wildfires were going all over. We'd had some drought times, and so we had lots of brush, easy to flare up. 222 wildfires. And um, uh, Jim Smith, who's over our witness publication, uh, said, have you thought about calling for a day of prayer? I said, actually, I have thought about that. He said, I would really encourage you about that. I said, okay, thank you. And so just that uh, little nudge from him, we called for a day of prayer for rain concerning the wildfires. And we called for it Memorial Day Sunday, which was, uh, some said, oh, that, the church has already got things planned that day. I said, I know, but that's when we need to do it. And so we, we called for Memorial Day Sunday, a day of prayer for rain on Monday. Uh, looking at the Weather Channel, they said a low has formed below the Keys, and that low started swirling. Uh, now, we prayed on Sunday. Monday, the low swirling. By Friday, June 1st, opening day of hurricane season, uh, Hurricane, uh, I believe it was Barry or Bonnie, uh, Tropical Storm Bonnie, uh, left Key West, headed north, and dumped 4 to 12 inches of rain on Florida dousing all 222 fires. When it got to Jacksonville on Saturday, June 2nd, the weather had said, well, we're not going to get anything. It'll, it'll fizzle out. We're not going to get anything. On that day, Jacksonville's weather reported the most rainfall on June 2nd in Jacksonville's weather history since 1873. In my neighborhood, my next door neighbor is uh, faithful to check the rain gauge. We got four inches in my neighborhood. Uh, the Bugaboo Fire was going on in South Georgia, the Swamp Fire. And that Swamp Fire was so big that it had covered Atlanta and Birmingham with a cloud of smoke. Uh, uh, Lake City, just to the west of there, was covered in a cloud, but it wasn't smoke on the interstate. You could drive on the interstate and look up, and there was this orangish glow of a cloud. It was smoke, and the glow was from the fire miles away. But it was like being in a sci-fi movie or something, just driving along and looking kind of a thing. But the Bugaboo Fire was 90% contained because of that tropical depression going forward. Um, fast forward to the fall. Uh, Atlanta is saying, we're not going to have any drinking water in three months. Uh, Mark Sterling called up, uh, prayer coordinator at that time, and said... Uh, you know, talking about some of these kind of things. And uh, I think at that point he put the praying about the weather on their website and sent a call to pastors out about praying uh, for rain. Sonny Perdue, the governor, called for a day of prayer for rain in November. And the media went kind of, they didn't know what to do. They were saying, is this a separation of church and state issue? Uh, what do we do about this? And uh, thankfully Sonny Perdue ignored all that and he just... <laughs> Kept on with the prayer. He prayed, and his wife prayed, and several folks prayed. Uh, if I'm remembering, it was November 13th, a Tuesday. Um, that may not be exactly right, but I think that was it. On Wednesday, winds shifted, and moisture started heading toward. In December uh, of that year, December was one of the top uh, rain seasons in Atlanta's weather history. Maybe not the top, but one of the top. And... Um, Rain started coming, and the reservoir started filling up. Now, if you have had, had any of you had been to Atlanta at that time, and you'd wanted to buy lakefront property, you could have bought some, except your lakefront property would have a, a dock going out to right here, and it's all dry here, and maybe the boat's on the, on the ground, and go out about 50 yards, and then you would come to water. Uh, lake's just going down, 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 down. But now they're all up, 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 and God warped in, in that. Um, out of that, we uh, each year have called for a day of prayer concerning hurricane season, uh, the first Sunday of hurricane season each year. So we did that in 8, 9, 10, and then in 11. Um, and with the Weather Channel uh, saying, well, it's going to be tough. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And they would be coming. And they'd be coming towards Florida. And then they'd bump into a something out in the Atlantic and go north, just like they're doing this year. Now, I'm not saying they're going to continue to do that. We may have a whatever. Uh, but I am saying that God has chosen to be merciful to Florida in these days. 
Uh, we got our hits in '04 when we had the five hurricanes um, that we were dealing with at the same time, or the disaster relief that we were dealing with out of all that. But God has been very gracious and merciful to us, and I think it's an example, uh, at least in part, of what God wants to do to, in lots of different places, um, and, and seeing him work. Um, there's a lot of uh, mixed up, mixed voices out there. If you call for a prayer meeting and a, and a, and a politician happens to attend, they'll make it a political issue. Um, but bottom line, we need to pray. And, and God will do a work uh, in that. And I, I think that uh, we've just got to be very, very attuned to the heart and voice. One people. other story, and that's the Gulf uh, oil spill. Okay. Um, well, you know, BP was doing all kind of stuff, um, and it wasn't working, and it wasn't working, and it wasn't working. Bill Robertson, who's the prayer uh, coordinator for Louisiana Baptist Convention, <clears throat> he called me up. He said, Brother Rick, we got to do something about this oil spill. We got to pray. And, and so we started talking, and I just I said, You know, I said, Bill, we're having a day of prayer for hurricane season coming up the first Sunday in June. He said, Now tell me about that. I said, I sent an e blast out to pastors with a bulletin insert that they can reproduce and just put in the bulletin. On that day, we pray for. He said, Well, send that to me. So I sent that to him. He called for a day of prayer concerning hurricanes and the oil spill. I think it was the third Sunday in June. He had done ours on the first Sunday in June. And uh, uh, somehow in all of that, Bobby Jindal got some kind of word in the midst of all that, and all of a sudden the governors of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the lieutenant governor of Florida called for a day of prayer for the last Sunday of June across all five states, all the Gulf states there. And um, that was the last Sunday in June. Well, come July 16th, if I remember correctly, they capped the well. And uh, people would say, well, that's a coincidence, but we believe it to be a God incidence where he did something because they couldn't. I mean, all the best engineering that's out there couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. We prayed. And the prayer intensified. It wasn't just Florida. It wasn't just Louisiana. It was all five states. The prayer intensified. And then God was gracious and capped the, the oil spill. Uh, there was another report I just read recently. Uh, came across my desk. Um, that one of the things that hurt. And it happened right after one of those prayer times. Was the weather systems around that area. Was chopping up the water. And dispersing the oil in a very unique kind of a way. Um, so, again, uh, we see God working in those kind of things, and I think it's another one of those gets our attention to focus our attention so we pay attention.